Welcome everybody to the Fiocoff team and Berkshire Hathaway's Home Services Seller Seminar. Thank you very much for coming this evening. And we've got a lot of great information for you. I do want to introduce our team. We've got Jessica Berginski, mm -hmm. Sherry Blada, and our marketing team is Sharon Shafrin and Lily Dolomaya. And I'm Mary Fielkoff. We also have some great speakers for you this evening. So we're going to go over the whole process. If you're considering selling maybe now or maybe in six months or even in a year, all this information will be great for you to have. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. And Jessica is going to go over the beginning process of when you're thinking of selling your home. Hi everyone, thank you for coming tonight. My name is Jessica Berdzinski and tonight we're gonna to be going through an overview of the selling process. Now we have included for you in your packet um, a pamphlet called The Process um, in your folder where we'll review, it's just an overview of the selling process. So first we start with the initial consultation. And in this initial consultation, we'll come with you to meet with you and discuss your needs and your goals for selling your home. Now in this initial consultation, we'll also discuss our unique marketing plan that we have crafted solely for your particular property. And we'll be able to discuss the process for pricing and the pricing strategy that will be best for your home, your goals, and for the market conditions. Now, after the consultation, we'll be able to list your property on the market, and then we will be able to put our marketing plan into action. After showings and after we receive all of the offers, we will go ahead and take a look at the offers. We'll summarize the offers for you, and we'll be able to present them to you with highlighted terms and conditions. Now, during the negotiation period, we will be able to negotiate on your behalf the most favorable terms and the highest purchase price for you. Once we've decided which offer we're going to accept, we will then open escrow. During this escrow process, we will make sure that we stay on top of contingency timelines and we will be available for all the in-person appointments such as, you know, inspections, um, we'll be there for the appraisal, and we'll be there for the final walkthrough. Lastly, after we've, you know, reviewed all the contingencies and all the contingencies are removed, and once we have clear to close, we will ensure we will work with escrow to provide a smooth and successful closing. Congratulations, we have just sold your home in an easy five-step process. Now Mary will come and she'll go into more detail about our seller consultation and the first steps in preparing your home for sale. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Thank you, Jessica. So as you see in your packet, Jessica gives you a little bit of a snapshot as far as the process goes. And what we really want to do is let you know on that consultation, whether you're hiring us or maybe even another agent, that you need to make sure that, you, um, that we know your goals what your expectations are. Do you have any particular time frames that we're working with? Or maybe are you being uh, moving out of state? So all these things are items that we wanna make sure that we understand so that we can get you, um, you know, your end results and, and as smooth as possible. So now what we have here during the consultation is not only do we ask our sellers questions, to make sure that we are meeting all their goals and all their needs, but we also encourage questions asked from the seller. So we've got a list of questions here that you're gonna to wanna to ask any real estate agent that you are interviewing. What you really want to consider is, you wanna choose a real estate agent from their marketing plan. Now you have to remember, real estate agents don't control the market but they can control the marketing plan to get you the most dollar in the quickest amount of time. The other thing you wanna consider is, you don't wanna choose an agent just because of price. A professional agent will actually show you facts and closed sales and properties that are on the market right now that are gonna be competing with your property. 
in order to get you top dollar. Now, the other thing is, again, we have a list of questions here that we suggest that you ask anybody that you're interviewing. And one of them is, are you a full-time real estate agent? Now, believe it or not, nine out of 10 people in California have their real estate license. And maybe one out of those nine actually is a full-time agent. There's so many things changing in the market today, you guys. You need somebody who's full-time and really has their finger on the pulse of the market. Um, do you have a full-time personal assistant or a staff? After we go through this class today, you'll notice that there's so many details that need to be covered. So we wanna make sure everything is covered. Again, making sure this transaction is as smooth as possible. Um, do you have references? Now, when we meet with our sellers, we immediately give a list of references. And this is really important. You wanna call these people. You wanna find out what their experience was with the agent. Um, are you associated with referral service? Now, this is one of the wonderful things about Berkshire Hathaway is we have real, um, referral contacts globally. And we have so many transfers coming in, believe it or not, still to California. And this is the golden buyer. So this is really an important point. How about what do you do differently? Now, it appears on the surface that all of the agents do the same thing. But I got to tell you guys, we are all very different. And there's really aggressive marketing plans that'll help you get top dollar. So please, when you are interviewing an agent, keep all these... Um, questions in mind. Now, the other thing we'd like to do on our consultation is go over the contracts. We like to leave the listing contracts with our clients and we have put a sample in the pack. And this will go over the terms as far as price, uh, fees, commissions, what the obligations are of the agent, and also what the obligations are of you as a seller. The other thing we've put in the packet and we like to do on our consultation is go over any type of seller disclosures. What we like to do is be proactive. So we have our sellers fill out all the disclosures. So when we get an offer, we are able to give those disclosures immediately to any buyer who we've accepted. Now, the other thing we are really focused on getting any of our sellers top dollar. So we have here a list of to prepare for your home. Now, you guys, at first glance, this list looks daunting. But remember, we want to show your home in the best light possible. So whether it's curb appeal, making sure your um, shrubbery is cut down below the windows to let all that fresh light in, whether it's making sure your windows are clean, whether it's making sure your carpeting's done, whether it's the decluttering, we want to make the home look as model perfect as possible. Because in today's real estate world, the buyers are looking for things that are turnkey. They want to be able to visualize themselves in your home. Some other things that we have on our list, um, removing any newspapers, any computer cords, any... Um, uh, phone chargers, etc. Rearranging the furniture in any of the living rooms or family rooms to make sure it looks as spacious as it can. The buyer's two areas that they highlight the most are actually the kitchen and the bathrooms. So we really want to focus on those. Clean out those cupboards, make sure all the counters are cleaned off, put away those toasters, those coffee makers, we, again, want to make it look as clutter-free as possible so that a buyer can visualize themselves in there. Um, the other thing is, is that you do want to focus on the other bedrooms as well. Make sure you clean your closets. Make sure you um, have nice linens and bedspreads and pillows and whatnot um, in any of the secondary bedrooms. If you have a workout room, clean it out and make sure there's no clothes hanging on that um, uh, what is it, the uh, cycle thing or whatever people are using today. Um, so again, these are suggestions, but it does really help you guys get top dollar. Now, one of the things that also helps you get top dollar is our great marketing. And I want to introduce our marketing team. 
Sharan and Lily, and they're going to go over a little bit about what strategies we use in order to really focus on how we're going to get a buyer for your home. Sharan, Lily. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, as Mary says, Lily and I, um, my name's Sharan, we are the marketing division for the Fieldcoff team. Um, probably the most exciting division, I have to say. Uh, we, as, as Mary so eloquently put, we are the team that makes sure that you get top dollar for your house. How do we do that? Isn't all marketing the same? You just take some photos and you put it on the MLS, right? Wrong. That's where the difference is. We do things very differently with the Fieldcoff team and with Berkshire Hathaway. Um, when we're considering marketing your home, we are being very specific to your home. We want to customize our marketing plan specifically to your home. What does that mean? That means we look at all the amenities, features, and benefits that your home has to offer, and we will customize a plan to showcase those. Now, we do that by weaving in lifestyle. Now, you're going to say to me, hold on, Shran, lifestyle? My home doesn't have a lifestyle. Yes, it does, because as Mary put it, we at Berkshire Hathaway market internationally, nationally, and locally. And trust me, someone from Indiana or Ohio is looking at us in Southern California going, wow, I want that lifestyle. So we are weaving a lifestyle very firmly into showcasing your home's features and benefits. So the way we are different from all the other agents out there and all the other marketers is we're doing something very specific and very custom specific to your home. It is not one size fits all whatsoever. Um, one of the ways in which we do this and in which we incorporate the amazing network that our brand offers us is through our virtual marketing system. Now, this was born out of the pandemic. Now, we know COVID and the pandemic was awful, but there were some things that came out of it that I think might stick, right, Lily? Absolutely. We think the virtual marketing system is one of them. So what does that mean? A lot of agents will say they network, right? We network to get your home sold for the best price. We actually take networking one step further. So we create a video of your home, a tantalizing trailer, so to speak, and we then offer that to all of the agents within our network. That means they can take that video, they can put it on their social media, network to their database. So now not only do you have our team's database that we're networking to, you have everyone in our entire network doing the same thing. Just think about that. That's an amazing amount of people that are being targeted specifically for your home rather than just putting something on a website and hoping something will stick, right? That's not how we do things here at the Fieldcoff team. Um, so our virtual sy marketing system is in place. It networks with a real tool. People can put it on their social media, on their database. They can target specific clients that they might have that might be perfect for your home and they can see the home in all its glory. It's not just someone talking about it, it's not just some photos, it's the home coming to life. And within that video, we're going to target and specialize what the home offers in terms of features and benefits and showcase the lifestyle that it offers us. Because when you really think about it, when most buyers start their search, they don't start with a house, they start with a city, they start with a neighborhood, a community, and then they get down to the house. So really the search has become way before they even get to your house. So that's why lifestyle is so important because we need to target them before they even get to the specific house stage. We want to showcase the area, how our abundance of we're next to the beach, we have amazing weather, we have all of these amenities before they even get to your home. And that's what makes us different that's what makes us Berkshire Hathaway. That's what makes us Forever Agents for your home. And that's what makes us a cut above everyone else. And so with that in mind, Lily's going to share with you a little bit more in detail about what our marketing entails. Um, take it away, Lily. Thank you. Well, that gives you the idea of the psychology of how we target the home for different audiences. So it's think of it as casting a net. It's a comprehensive marketing plan can only be one-sided. So we are, in, we are encompassing social media, 
print, direct mail. Social media is huge. 95% of homeowners are searching for homes three months before they even think about getting you know, a loan or you know, how much money can they can afford. They do that online. So what we do at Berkshire Hathaway and at the Fieldcoff team is that we take um, the ideal, we all leave breadcrumbs in social media of behaviors, right? So they're like our social, um, what do you call it, our, 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 our profiles, right? We don't realize it, but people my age have cer certain likes and dislike, and that provides a market study. We take that ideal Oak Park resident or Westlake resident or whatever your home is located in Thousand Oaks, Ojai, whatever that is, and we search for that profile across the country and across globally. California has billions and billions of dollars coming in from property buyers across the world because we right now live in the biological belt of, of Southern California. We have a lot of labs, a lot of development, a lot of technology that is being very quietly developed in this area. So those are our people that are coming in from internationally. So we never want to ignore the international market. So we're doing social media, very targeted, very, and Mary is huge about showing her the proof. Who has been looking at this? Who has been doing this? And we multiply that into like white areas. Also, just locally, think about what the pandemic has done for us. So Sharon is very right. So we want to look at a house before we actually have to actually put clothes on and go see a house in an open house. We want to make sure that we like it in a virtual marketing system. We have also learned that People from nearby counties that are a little more congested than ours, like Orange County, Los Angeles, are looking for Ventura County as an ideal home area because of our space, our open spaces. We've also realized that we don't have to be in a geographical area to our job. We are doing more and more work from home, so our houses, our open spaces are all very desirable. So what that means to us marketing-wise, we're gonna look at your target area, look at who's coming to the area, and then throw a net on that where there is direct marketing and you have some samples of uh, postcards that we send out. Um, we have uh, social media, like I said, advertising in magazines like Pacific Palisades, Santa Monica. We have a lot of residents that are coming from there. So it's a lot of psychology that comes into the marketing. So when somebody tells you, I'm just gonna use the MLS, they're really not tapping into finding you that buyer. Most importantly, finding you multiple buyers so that you have options to choose from. So that's something that we really take a thought process on and uh, we make sure that we feature your property, like Sharon said, featuring not only um, the house but also the lifestyle that you can maintain in the house. We have country clubs, we have beaches, we can really look at what that architecture of your house, what kind of resident will live in it and explore, in, explore that further. So um, we're definitely taking care of all the details. We create websites for you and those are not your regular websites that are just photography and you're like, oh, well, it's just a slideshow, someone's photo book. No, we actually write copy that describes what it feels like to be in that room, what it feels like to wake up in that morning in that room and have breakfast in that breakfast nook. And uh, we go room per room. So we're giving a uh, uh, poetic description where you can't really help but want to see it. But the idea is uh, what makes us different from other uh, teams or other realtors that you work for is the thought process that goes into and the value that we pay and the respect that we pay for your uh, to your house. It's the place where you will make memories. It's the most emotional purchase anyone will make. We understand that it's hard to let go of that house that you lived in for 20, 30 years. You may be ready to, to move from the house or you may want something new. Uh, please know that your house is in good hands. Uh, we uh, respect the point of view that made it a home and we want to make it a home for someone else as well. Absolutely. We really think about the emotional connection that a future buyer will make with your home and we tap into that. That's what gets you the best price for your home um, and hopefully you can understand the thought process that goes behind it now a little bit more and obviously we'll have questions at the end. Um, I hand back to Mary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much ladies. Some great information there. Now, the next thing that is very important when we are basically getting your home ready is staging. So we've got our stagers here. Hi everyone, I'm Samantha. In case you don't know me, I own Elite Home Staging. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what staging is, first of all. So all of you guys are here because you wanna sell your homes and you wanna go with this amazing team. 
which they're the beginning process, right? So once you've chose your agent, Mary, and you've decided, you know what, your price, now it's time for me to come in. And what I do is I come in and I look at your property. And I look at it because I'm the icing on the cake. She's going to get rid of the clutter, the, the whatever else is in there that you know I don't deal with. What I do is I come in and I bring in furniture, accessories, plants, art, but make it so it looks like a model home. Why do I do that? I do that because we want to deal with the broad mass. We want all kinds of people to look at your home and go, oh, I want to take that and I, I'm going to offer above asking. So that's really what staging is. Um, it's been around a long time. I started my company, which I'll tell you now, 14 years ago in my garage in Calabasas. Um, I've, you know, so I'm really involved with all kinds of things. I, staging to me is helping your dreams come true, basically what it is. And I tell, I have 14 girls, I tell them all the time, you're making the buyer's dreams come true. Because what we do is we go in and stage, and I can't tell you, we've staged over 10,000 homes. So I've done a lot of staging. Our average sale is 23 days. Why? Because I created a formula that makes it easy on the eye. The other good thing about us is we do a lot of social media. We, we create a lot of social media. If And then also, when they we, you decide to stage the home, we will cater the broker's caravan. So this is really important because it gets a lot of agents to the home. And those agents are going to bring the buyers, right? So that's really important. So not only do I cater the broker's caravans, I make sure it's staged well. We do the social media and we always, like so many times we get way over asking. Staging is really the icing on the cake and what, in the end, it's what gets you the most money for your home. And that's really it. Thank you, Samantha. So as you know, you know, there is a big process. Um, staging is one of them. Sometimes Samantha will come in and take your current furniture that you have and maybe just say, we need to remove a few pieces. We can move this furniture here and work with what you have now. Maybe you have a vacant piece of property and you want certain room stage. One thing that we have seen, hands down, staging will get you more money. Sometimes it's $20,000 more. Sometimes it's $50,000 more. We've even seen $100,000 more from having a house staged as opposed to having a house vacant. So again, we just want to offer as many different possibilities to you that we can in order to get you top dollar. Now, another thing to consider when you are putting your home on the market is inspections. And we've got Stuart Glazer here who's going to talk a little bit about inspections for us. Home inspection is kind of an interesting field. Uh, we're the unbiased third party. You know, we come into a house and we have a few hours to tell you everything that's going on with that house, like everything from the foundation to the roof. And, you know, if it's visible and it's accessible, we inspect it. We don't do underground systems because you can't see it. Uh, we have a standard of practice, and the practice follows everything that, like I say, is visible and accessible, but it does deal with everything. And the job is to detect conditions, evaluate what you're seeing, and direct you. So I call them the dead commons, detect, evaluate, and direct, because as inspectors, you may not know this, but there's no licensing yet, not in the state of California. So anyone can hang a shingle up and say they're a home inspector. So hopefully you hire someone that's within a, a accredited association of inspectors because at least then there's a standard of practice they follow. And also, also sorry, a code of, uh, of ethics, you know, like a standard of ethics. Like uh, the standard is to be upfront, forthright, honest, answer questions, put things in perspective. Everything, every house has an issue. I mean, people say to me, oh, I bet your house is perfect. Uh, far from it. I, but the problem is with inspectors is we know everything that's wrong with our house. That's always not a good thing. But we're upfront with 
with, their, with your questions and being forthright with uh, answers so that you really know what's defective, what's substandard, what's not up to code. And what does that mean, code? Code is a funny thing. It means uh, when your house was built, when your house was remodeled, or a new installation. I mean, you're not going to you know, look at a water heater that was installed two months ago by age of the house since the house was built 30 years ago. It's when it was put in or it's when the house was remodeled. Uh, that's how you inspect. Otherwise, no house ever would be up to code. Code, like I say, is a funny word. People say, well, you know, would you buy this house? Is this up to code? This? I get the questions you can't believe. But at the same token, forthright, honesty, and identification. So honor, honorable uh, inspections is always the way to go. People who whose only concern is enabling you to know what you're buying. What is this? Is this a good house, good foundation, good roof? Is the heating and air okay? You know, we detect, take, I take pictures and I identify things that way, and then these reports are made to be pretty layman, I mean, as far as, um, you know, not confusing when you read them. You know, it's all email, it's all on a pad or, or however you do your inspections, and and you generally send them out like within an hour or so. That goes quick. So everybody gets it right away So because everybody's under time restraints and it's important that you get your reports and make yourself available to, to explain what's in them. Um, what does that mean as far as, uh, you know, can you buy a house without, a, uh, without this thing? I mean, it doesn't have a, a, a termination on the water heater. Is that legal? Legal? Sure, you can buy a house without a roof. I mean, you know, it doesn't make the condition of sale. Your point of sale is nothing to do with any of that. It's only to do with what's contractual, and Mary knows that stuff. I, I just picked this stuff up, bit, bits and pieces here and there. I've seen a few. After, I don't know, 18,000 some odd inspections, you pick up a few things. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea. I don't want to take more time than that, but gives you a little idea of what to expect from the home inspector. Okay, and if I can answer any questions later, I'll stand by, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Stuart, Thanks. so Thank much. Thank you. So we've gone over the process, we've gone over the consultation, we've gone over marketing, staging, and inspections. Now let's go over price strategy and really how to focus on how to set your price and how to get the most money. Jessica. So I mentioned earlier, we want to go with a pricing strategy that will fit your goals and also reflect market conditions. Now there's a lot of factors that go into the market value and determining market value, such as location, size, how many bedrooms, how much square footage, the condition, have you had some remodeling done, and amenities both in your home and in the general area. These all are factors that we take into consideration when determining market value. Now, as far as pricing strategies, we have three pricing strategies. First is our data-driven strategy. And in this strategy, we go ahead and run a comparative market analysis. Now, in this analysis, we will look at all the comparable properties which are similar properties to your home in location and size. And we will look at these comps and this is how we will determine um, the market value based on recent sold properties. In this data driven strategy, we will market and list your property at closest to this market value. This is great for a balanced market. Our next strategy is the competitive strategy. In this pricing strategy, we may list your house just below market value. This will in turn create a sale, a quick sale, and also attract the most buyers. So we've seen this as a popular strategy in today's seller's market. And lastly is the retail strategy. In this retail strategy, we may list your house and give a cushion just above what the data suggests. And this is to be able to um, compete with buyers that might want to negotiate the price down. Um, and so this is commonly seen in a buyer's market. Now, there are dangers of overpricing in any market. So we wanna make this clear that 
The peak of buyer's interest are in the first few days of the listing being on the market and the first weekend of showings. So we wanna make sure we have a competitive price right out of the gate. An overpriced home may result in fewer buyers and less offers, and ultimately the property may end up going and selling below market value. So in today's market, like I mentioned, in today's seller's market, we have seen great success with this competitive strategy. And we have a case study for you that I want to share with you. Um, we had a property that we knew was valued around 875. We went ahead and listed the property for $849.9. Now we received multiple offers and they all came in around $875, $880. Now, through our negotiation skills and leveraging the bidding war with the multiple offers we received, we were able to negotiate the price up and eventually accepted an offer for $901, over 50 grand over the list price. So I wanted to share that with you. And now Mary will come and she'll go over reviewing the offers we receive and also how we negotiate the best possible terms and purchase price. And trust me, Mary's our expert negotiator. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> So you guys, also in your packet, um, what we gave you was a sample of a residential purchase contract. There's a lot of great stuff in the packet, so later on you can go through it. So this is a copy of the residential purchase contract. And really what we want to do is we want to make sure you understand all the different points. And in here, not only, it'll be on the uh, left side of your folder. That's it right there. Perfect. So not only will the contract specify price, escrow, and other terms, but it'll also go over all the different contingency periods that a buyer may have. Now, as you may know, a contingency is actually a provision in the contract that allows the buyer to do investigating or maybe check out financing in a particular time frame. What, what we like to do is we want to negotiate the smallest amount of time frame for these contingencies to be removed because we are protecting our sellers, our clients like yourself um, in the contract. Now, when you receive a contract to purchase your home, you've got three choices. You can immediately accept, you can reject, or you can counter. You've got all three of those choices. So what I also did in our packet is I gave you a sample of a counter offer. Now maybe there's everything in the original offer that's acceptable, but maybe the escrow period or maybe the price. This is the form that we would use to make sure that those items were changed. Now again, when we go back to a buyer with a counter offer, that buyer has the same three options. They can accept, they can reject, or they can counter. So I also gave you a sample of the buyer counter. Now, once in a while, it may just go one counter. Sometimes we might go back and forth and back and forth. And of course, everything in real estate needs to be in writing. Now in today's seller's market, we have another form, of course, and it is the seller multiple counter offer. We don't want to sell your home to two different buyers. So on a seller multiple counter offer, we are allowed to counter buyer A, buyer B, buyer C, buyer D, all at the same time. And if they all come back signed, you as the seller get to decide which buyer that you'd like to choose. So you can see it's very important that you've got strong agents to negotiate in your best behalf, not only contingency periods, but maybe free rent backs, um, making sure that inspections are sold, uh, the house is sold as is. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're hiring an agent. Now, after reviewing offers, what we also do, um, something different than any other agent out there, Let's say the offer comes in with financing. 
we sell real estate, we see financing all the time, but we take it a step further. We actually work with a great lender, Sean, and what we'll do is we actually send all the financials on, our, on the prospective buyer to Sean, the lender, to make sure that he can review to see if there's any red flags that we, uh, that we may need to consider with the particular buyer that we're considering purchasing your house. So again, we wanna go above and beyond. Now remember, not only does the contract address the price and the escrows, but it also addresses the contingency periods. So again, you want a strong agent to negotiate everything in your best behalf. We've gone over the process, we've gone over pricing, we've gone over staging, we've gone over the offers. One of the other things that's very important is title insurance. We've got Vicki Hughes here, and she's gonna go a over a little bit about what that exactly means. When you open up escrow, Mary and Jessica will obviously open up escrow with me. And the first thing we do is we look at your property to see if there's anything unusual that needs to be fixed. You gotta remember that a title company is an insurance company. First and foremost, we're an insurance company. So we need to clear, just like if you were buying life insurance, right? They would want to make sure that you're somewhat of a healthy individual before they start insuring you. And so a title insurance company, it's the one product when you sell a home that you, like, you don't have to redo your home warranty or you have to do your home warranty annually. Title insurance is for the length of the time you own the property. Unless you refi and then we do a, a, another search. But if you're selling a property, then the first thing we're going to do is to make sure that you're the owner, that you're not selling a property that you really don't own, right? And if you're, a, as Mary knows, representing a buyer, you want to make sure your buyer can buy that property. So one of the things I wanted to put in there is things that we're seeing in the title industry right now that are so prevalent, so many properties are in a trust. And, right, so and I don't know if it was COVID, people started getting their affairs in order, I don't know. But more properties being transferred right now are in a trust, escrow will attest to that. So um, there are certain things that you need to do to sell a property in a trust that's very important, especially, God forbid, that there's a deceased member on title. So, you need the affidavit of death. You need to also know that, that they are the trustee of the trust and that they can, they're the ones that legally can sign the documents for a sale. And so title, that's what we do in the background. People think many times that title companies just hit a button, do a search, but there are so many things that go into it. And the very last minute, we need to look to see right before a recording if anyone in the family that's on title may have a tax lien. Oopsie. Now it's going to hold up your, your sale. So everything has to be clear. And again, let me reiterate that we're an insurance company. We are not going to take that liability. So that could happen. That could hold up a sale. But if you have a title company like myself, a title rep, for 30 years in the industry, I have my hands on it. So that's super, super important. So title will, you open escrow, we search the property, we make sure everything's clear, we have the documents all in line so you can record properly, we set up the recording, the night before, we will double check to make sure nobody messed up somewhere during the escrow. <laughs> and then we record the property and we say, congratulations, you are confirmed. So that's what title does. That's what we do and it is an actual necessity for your transaction. So I'm Vicki with Landwood Title. I've been doing this for 30 years. Thank you, Vicki. 
Okay, so we've talked a lot also about escrow. So if Eileen and Lisa can come up and we'll, they'll talk a little bit about exactly what the escrow process is after we've gotten your home sold. Thank you, Mary. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yes, definitely escrow is definitely not as exciting as <laughs> marketing and staging. Um, so my name is Lisa David, and I am the escrow officer branch manager at Affirmative Escrow. So what escrow does is we're a neutral third party that collects documents and funds. And once everything is in order, we authorize the recording of the documents at the county, which is considered the closing. At that point, we then disperse all funds on the file, and most importantly, we disperse the seller's proceeds. <laughs> My name's Eileen Flaherty, and I'm the manager of the opening department. My job is coordinating all of the new escrows as they open. I review the contract, uh, request necessary documents, reach out to the buyers for the deposit and type the escrows. Once the buyer's deposit's received, I make sure that one of the staff members uh, has ordered the homeowners association or any other necessary reports. Correct. So this is just kind of what we do through the process is what we're taking you through here. Um, so then the file is passed to me um, and I set up, a, a, I set the file up to be reviewed. I set up a, a file checklist and a calendar. And as the escrow officer, my job is to review the calendar and, and file checklist daily and distribute the work to the staff. So I'm delegating work. That's my job. <laughs> so based on the contract and closing date, there are specific tasks that need to be completed at a specific time. Um, we are also responsible for ordering the Homeowners Association documents, the preliminary title report, which is a preliminary title report that that shows what's recorded against the property. And Vicki was very good at explaining that. Um, we also order a uh, natural hazard zone disclosure report um, to uh, send to the buyer and seller. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, during the course of the escrow, we use software that sends uh, automated emails and text messages to the real estate agents and assistants to keep them apprised of the completion of certain tasks which we've completed and documents we've received. Uh, this is something that sets affirmative apart from our competition. Yeah, so you actually get, when let's say for example, when a buyer's deposit comes in, the, uh, uh, well, you as sellers, <laughs> we have this system set up where there's automatic text going out to the agents to let them know when things are done certain tasks like the buyer's deposit or like when we get loan documents in. Um, our, our files are mainly paperless. Uh, we keep very extensive notes in the files and that are, um, that is, sorry, that is our entire staff is able to access. We have remote employees, we have employees in the office, so being paperless and having a system where everybody can access whatever's done in the file is, is, is very, um, helpful. Um, when we, we do get original documents, they are scanned into our escrow software where they're held securely. This allows the entire staff to have access, whether on-site or remotely. The majority of what we do is by email. Uh, as a seller, you'll receive an opening package from escrow uh, that will contain necessary documentation complied to comply with all state and local rec regulations, uh, as well as documents that provide us necessary information to clear title issues and address any loans or liens against the property. Uh, there's also uh, documents such as a grant deed that will require to be notarized, and we typically um, go to you, have your document notarized, and bring it back to the office. Uh, the only documents that we need original is the notarized grant deed. Everything else can be done electronically, and we tend to use DocuSign most of the time now. That's the preference. And, but we still have some that like to have hard copy, and if that's your, your uh, preference, we will still do that. <laughs> Absolutely. So we also um, coordinate directly with the buyer's lender and um, receive the buyer's loan documents and coordinates uh, the signing of the documents and the funding of the buyer's loan. Escrow requests payoff statements if you have an existing mortgage. 
we need a statement so uh, that the loan can be paid off through through escrow. So we we uh, request the payoff statements on any existing loans on the property, and we also provide you with an estimated closing statement to sign prior to closing, as a seller. Upon closing, we'll wire your proceeds to your account and provide you a final closing statement. Our goal. Oh, no, and, go ahead. No. And, and, and final 1099, because we do have to report. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Our goal is to work with all parties in the transaction to assure the process is as smooth as possible and keep communication and documents flowing in a timely manner. We, we approach our job in a very po proactive manner. We are always available to, to speak with you if you have any questions along the way and to help walk you through the paperwork and process. And that's it. Perfect, ladies, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Escrow is really an important process and these ladies are so on top of it and it is really, again, makes that transaction so smooth. Yes, and those text messages are great too, so we don't have to keep bugging them. Did we get the deposit in? We know right away when we get that text message that everything is in order. Exactly. They are very on top of it. <laughs> so there's a few other things we'd like to go over before uh, while closing. One, we know that we've given you a lot of information in a short period of time. We've made up a great package that basically has all the information that we've gone over um, and also information about what our speakers went over. And then the last thing we want to do, Jessica's going to go over a moving day countdown. Yes, so we've talked through the selling process and we wanted to give you this moving day countdown. So basically it gives you a breakdown, you know, six weeks, four weeks, three weeks, two weeks, one week, you know, one day moving day um, before moving. And so we felt this was helpful for our sellers. So a few things, you know, you can take a look at, but is to make sure you have reservations for moving and for moving, you can hire movers, you can rent a truck, just make sure, you know, you have those uh, appointments set. And right now in the market like today, Believe it or not, it's really hard to find a mover. It is. Right? So you want to, I mean, really look at the list and figure out what is needed. Right. And some other items may be start packing items that you don't use day to day. So I would start packing with that first so that when it comes down to the final few weeks, you only really have the things that you use every day. And another thing to make sure you keep in mind is to pack possibly an overnight bag full of your first day essential items such as toiletries, you might want to pack yeah. bedding and a pillow. Sometimes people forget you move and you have to actually sleep there that <laughs> night, right? So people, I know Mary has that story she shared with me. We've had to go out and buy all bedding because we couldn't find it. Yes, so make sure that you're ready that you know, your bed is has been moved and if you're planning to sleep there that night of the move. Um, so those are just a few tips we have, you know, some things that you might not think about on our moving day countdown. We also have in your package um, a need more information. Again, we've gone over a lot of information so that you may have questions maybe about the contract or maybe about staging or maybe timing. Maybe you're not thinking of putting your home on the market until six months and you're wondering, when do I start this process? So again, um, please feel free to fill this out and mark any information or additional questions you need from us. And lastly, we want to thank you for being here today and we want to give you a gift from the Fieldcoff team. So we want, when you live with the list with the Fieldcoff team, we want to provide you with a one year home warranty plan up to $600. So, you know, with this home warranty plan, it will transfer to the buyer at the close of escrow. So typically this is a cost that the sellers do take on during escrow. And we want to be able to provide you with that and take that expense on so that you can provide your buyers with this home warranty plan. And the great thing about the home warranty is, is when we purchase, for, purchase it for you as a seller, you're covered. And I don't know why this happens, but someone will list a house and then suddenly the water heater breaks or the dishwasher breaks. Or there's a drip in the kitchen sink. Exactly. In the kitchen sink. <laughs> well, guess what? The home warranty not only covers you as the seller, but as Jessica explained, it is also transferable to the buyer of your home as well. 
So again, we wanted to thank you guys all for coming. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, wonderful. Thank you again. We really enjoyed.